Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's Tylerius, aka Ty Killington. Yeah, man. All right. In today's video, we're going to be talking about whether or not it's better to buy supplies or steal supplies. I thought that this had already been, you know, completely settled and there's no more issues, but I've been noticing on my live broadcasts, uh, getting new members in my crew and things like that, that there is a uh, maybe a a learning curve that has to be handled. We got tons, you know, thousands and thousands of new players still come into GTA every single week. So, and you know, just because of all the questions, I, people ask me that all the time in my broadcast. Ty, is it better to steal or buy supplies? And uh, I mean, if you don't want to watch the video, I can answer that right now. Buying supplies is going to be much more efficient. Period. There you go. You can quit watching the video right now if you want to. However, if you want to understand why buying supplies is better and you know what you need to do to make it the most efficient way uh then keep watching because we'll talk about all that stuff here in just a minute now you know i'm not i'm not trying to totally hate on uh on stealing supplies because that that would be dumb because there is definitely uh you know a, a solo stealing methods and and there's definitely ways to make money by stealing supplies i used to steal supplies all the time back in the day when i was just you know a solo player there is you know, uh, money methods that involve that, and there is ways to be profitable with that. However, it's just, these aren't opinions that I'm giving you. These are just facts, cold hard facts. And you can look anywhere amongst the GTA community, your top leaders and, and people that are that, that know what they're doing. This is a universal consensus. You know, buying supplies is more efficient. Um, and I know it's hard to understand that you're like, Ty, well, man, every time I buy supplies for the bunker, it's 75 grand. You know, for the MC business, it's 75, 45, you know, 15 grand. I understand that. I totally understand that. But, you know, when you put all these things together, when you combine your active businesses with your passive businesses uh, and, you know, and, and the way that you're able to do this and the methods that you're able to use, it is more efficient. There's just no other way around it. So what we're going to do here for the next couple of minutes is I'm going to sort of go over, you know, some pros and cons for each one. And like I said, there are some very valid cases and, and reasons to steal supplies. But you have to understand that in the grand scheme of things, it is less efficient than buying supplies. All right. And we'll go over that. And hopefully you'll be able to understand. And uh, this will help answer the question for you whether or not you should be buying supplies or stealing supplies. All right. So let's look at, you know, why you should buy supplies. Uh, I already mentioned this earlier. It's just more efficient. And what does that mean though? You're like, Ty, you keep saying efficiency, but what does that mean? Okay, so you have to understand that, you know, this is another known fact. Your businesses need to be fully upgraded. That's why every time I talk about buying a business, I always include the upgrades. Uh, you know, because you can't go out and buy a business and expect to be successful and profitable if you don't have the upgrades. Now, what do I mean by the upgrades? I'm talking about the personnel and the equipment. Every time I make a business buying guide, I always show and talk about that. So you should understand and, and know by now that you need to have the business upgrades to be profitable. This is going to be, you know, for stealing or buying supplies, but even much more so for both of these. So once it, you have your equipment upgrades bought, right, you buy your supplies, each business, you know, I can go to an MCT or I can fly around on my Mark II or drive around on my car or whatever uh, to each business and buy supplies. It takes, if I, if I were to go into the MCT in the arcade, it takes about 15 seconds to buy supplies for all five of my MC businesses and my bunker. And each business, it takes 10 minutes for the supplies to get delivered and they start cooking. All right. So in 10 minutes, I have resupplied all six businesses. All right. And then I can go on. And while those businesses are cooking, I can go on and start doing active work. And what do I mean by active? There's two different types of businesses in GTA 5 online. You have active and you have passive. Um, so your active businesses are things that you actively, you know, they're, they're active methods to make money, which would be running CEO crates, right? You go pick up the crate and then you sell it. Uh, import, export, you go pick up the car, then you sell it. That's an active business. Uh, heisting would be considered a active method of making money. You run your preps, then you complete the heist. You run the actual heist mission. Those are active businesses. The passive businesses or passive income are income that you you know purchase supplies or you steal and then the the income cooks it takes a, a a set amount of time to produce so bunker business 
nightclub, your MC businesses. Um, you know, these are passive income. Uh, your hanger business would be active income as well. That'd be, you know, just like CEO crates or, uh, but, you know, let's be honest, no, not, not a lot of people do hanger business. So we'll focus on, on the big three right there, the MC or the uh, the CEO warehouse, the the uh, import export and you know, doing your heist. So while you've got your per your supplies purchased, you can, you know, start working on your active income. This is where, you know, you always hear me talk about time to money ratio and time to money efficiency. That's what that, that's what I'm talking about right there. And the time that I'm delivering or that I, it takes for me to to you know buy the supplies and then for them to get delivered, I'm already off making money with my active income. The time that the my passive income is cooking, I am, you know, doing VIP and client job. That's active income as well. I'm doing, you know, I'm sourcing crates, I'm selling import export, I'm doing heist work all while my businesses are cooking. Every money method that you've seen me make, money methods you've seen you know, professional make, things like that, that's how the income is made. This is what we do, right? We source our, uh, we cook our supplies, we're you know, sourcing the active income and then we're selling it. So you know, with every one of my money methods that I have out there, those methods are combined. You combine passive and active income. So the passive income is cooking in the background while you are actively making money uh, with, you know, crates or, you know, heist or, you know, um, import, export, stuff like that. That's how that method works. So your efficiency is just more solid, okay, with uh, buying supplies. When you buy your supplies, you know, you don't run the risk of being griefed. Now, I always recommend to, you know, do everything in a solo lobby unless you have a crew. Um, of course, you can take the, the chance and source and or sell in a public lobby. But let's be honest here. There's a lot of griefers out there. And if you're trying to source, uh, you know, some supplies and you get griefed, you're just adding more time. And while you're sourcing, you're not making any active income. You're stuck on trying to get your passive income ready to go. And that's just not efficient. So when you buy your supplies, I go into my MCT and then I just buy it. Bam, it's done. It's all I have to do. I just wait. And that's it. The process has already started. So not getting grieved is a, is a major thing because the more you, you get grieved, the more you get caught in that loop. You get grieved, then instead of just focusing on your work, now you want to go and get your kill back. You get into, you, now you get into a loop with a griever. That's exactly what they want. They just want a reaction. They want someone to fight with, and then they get you off your game. They don't really care about KD. All they care about is just pissing people off. That's just what a troll or a griefer does. Now that's how they get their kicks. That's fine. You know, they can play the game however they want to. I'm not mad. At them. I understand it. Um, you know what I mean? But, you know, that's what you have to understand is that now you will be caught in a loop where you get griefed. You want to go get your kill back and you're not going to you're not going to get that kill back. You know what I mean? It's just you're going to keep on getting worked. Then you get pissed off. Uh, then you're like, screw money grinded. You start glitching money. You have all the money you want. Now you turn into a griever. That's how this process works. That's the cycle. That's what happens. OK, um, so, you know, that's what it is. Now, when you're buying income, combining passive and active income, like I've already talked about, that is a huge thing. That is huge. When you buy your supplies, you are much more efficient with you know combining your income. Now, you can combine incomes, you know, passive and active, when you steal supplies as well. But you have to tack on the amount of time it takes to steal your supplies with that active. So that all the time you're taking on stealing your supplies, you're not actively making income with your active with your active businesses. Okay. When you buy supplies, it is, you know, it's solo friendly and it's good with your friends and crew because now you, you know, if you are in a crew or if you have friends, you, you're, you're free to fill your businesses all the way up. You can buy your supplies, fill it all the way up and you can sell all those full bunkers, full, you know, MC businesses without having to close app every time you get a, a crappy, you know, post-op mission or dune buggies or if you're not good at flying or something like that. You know, so that's that's important. If you close up, you lose a little bit of supplies. You have to go back and source that. You're just adding time, and it's messing up your time to money ratio. Okay, uh, like I just mentioned, it's also solo friendly. When you buy your supplies, you know exactly. For example, on the bunker, uh, you know this is much more uh, true for the bunker versus MC businesses. But on the bunker, I know I can buy one round of supplies and every time it'll be the same amount of money that I'm going to be able to sell and it's solo friendly. That's a, that's a major business that is very, very solo friendly is the bunker. I can buy one round of supplies for 75 grand. It'll sell maxed out at, a, what is it, 210. So I make a net profit of 135,000. 
you know, and that's that's good money. That's you know, I, that's a guaranteed money. You can do that. It's more difficult to buy supplies and uh, and, and be solo friendly with the MC businesses, but it can still be done. You know, it's but uh, you have to understand that if you get crappy, you know, uh, sales, you may be inclined to close that. But you don't have to. The one good thing about the bunker and the MC businesses is that you could buy your supplies. Say you do get. Um, you know, your post-op trucks, there is a strong chance that you're not going to deliver all three, right? You'll still get paid for what you deliver, and, but you just don't get paid for what you don't. And the money does not count towards the tracker in the business, but you're still going to make money on it. So if you're okay with not being able to deliver everything, then, you know, that's fine. You're still, you know, you can do this solo. And most of the MC businesses you can get done by yourself. The planes, the choppers, the bikes, the trash trucks, uh, it's, it's really just the post ops and sometimes the aerial vehicles, if you're not good at flying, they can be pretty close because, you know, you've only got a certain amount of time to get these done with bunker. You can do everything solo, except for the dune buggies. You can do two dune buggies solo, right? But if you get four, that's going to be pretty hard to do, but everything else is, you're pretty much good to go. So, you know, they're going to be solo friendly to an extent. All right. Um, there is a there is a con to buying there's a, there is a, a negative to buying supplies is that you've invested money in it so you have to have money to get this going right it's not a lot but you do invest money in it and if you do lose your sale you've lost uh you know the investment that you put in that is a negative right but if you follow you know my tutorials my guides you do this in a crew lobby with your friends or you do this in a solo public lobby so you don't have to worry about that all right now I don't want to leave out stealing supplies because there is some positives to that, but you know there is more negatives. So let's talk about that. Stealing supplies, um, it is uh, a good idea it, if you do not have your business upgrades to steal supplies versus buying the supplies. But see, uh, you have to understand that's that's a negative. Not having your business upgrades is a very bad thing. Even if you steal supplies, you're going to be so much more uh, inefficient than you would be if you were stealing supplies and your business has had the upgrades. So I put this in there because it is an absolute fact that there's a ton of people that have businesses, but they're not upgraded. So it would be more efficient for you to steal your supplies, but you're still going to be even less efficient if you were to have the upgrades and stealing supplies. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of people are like, Ty, I buy supplies, but I don't make any money. Well, that's because you don't have your business upgrades, okay? Because it's just a proven fact. There is just no other way around it. If you have the upgrades, you are making money. Even the document forgery business will make you roughly 30000 net net profit, or a little bit more, uh, when, when buying supplies. Okay, so, you know, stealing supplies, there is some positives to it, and that would be one of them. If you are, maybe you're watching this video for the first time and you didn't know that you, know, you had to have business upgrades. Uh, and you're, you probably, maybe you only have a couple, you know, maybe you have like 20 grand, right? Uh, you obviously cannot pay the 1.5 million that it, on average it takes to get full, you know, business upgrades for your business. So stealing supplies would be the way to go. Uh, it is a hundred percent profit. It is. But remember your time to money ratio has dropped. Your money per hour has dropped because you're not able to combine your active incomes. Uh, and you have to understand that each MC business takes between three and five uh, steel supply runs to get filled up. So you're talking, you have to add on 30 minutes to an hour for each MC business, okay? Then you have to tack on the amount of time it takes to fill up your bunker too. It's the same thing with the MC businesses. So we're, we're talking between, you know, four to six hours to get everything sourced if you're stealing supplies, plus the time it takes to cook. And remember, while you are stealing supplies, your production in your businesses will stop. All this messes up your time to money ratio. Whereas I could just go to my master control terminal and just buy my supplies. And it takes like, I don't know, 15 seconds for all businesses. And then I just, you know, when I'm, I, I do a couple hours of, uh, of active income, I stop back in my arcade and then buy some more. And that's it. It's so much more efficient, so much easier. You may say, Ty, I got my friends to help me out. And they'll help me steal supplies and then, you know, it's, it's quicker. That is true. If you're thinking, if they're only going to help you all the time, you have to understand the rule of assistance, the rule of multiplied help. If you have four people helping you, then you have to help those other three people. 
So the amount of time it takes for them to help you, you're going to have to multiply that by four because it takes the time to help, to get yours done. Then you're going to have to help that person, the next person, the next person. All right. I don't know anybody that just has people continuously helping them all the time and they don't help back. You are a terrible person if you do that. Right. Uh, there's there may be some YouTubers out there that do that. You know, me personally and in my crew, it is a mandatory rule. You have to offer to give help before you receive any help. OK, that is a mandatory thing. Uh, you and no matter what, you always have to be involved in helping other people's businesses. That's just, you know, that's just good quality, you know, standards right there, period. You know, that, that, that's just how it is. So you can't say, Ty, oh, it's quicker if I get people to help me. Yeah. In the short term for you only. OK, but that's just you can't apply that to a formula because it is it's it's a fallacy of, of data. It doesn't work that way. All right. For every every input that comes to you, you have to give an output to help somebody else out. All right. You see, we see where that comes in. So if you are confident in knowing that people are going to help you every single time and you don't have to help anybody else, I mean, I guess you could make that argument, but it's, it's not going to stand over here with me. It's just not going to work. All right. So keep that in mind. Um, there is a, you know, I've got videos talking about how you can make money solo by stealing supplies. All right. And there's absolutely a method to that. Uh, but it does. Again, I've said it a million times in this video, but it messes up your time to money ratio. So for the MC businesses, for example, this is the method. It's real simple. Say you have five MC businesses. This works best if you have all five. OK, uh, remember document forgery and um, your your weed businesses become more profitable. So it is more viable to have all five. What you do is you. You start with your Coke business, which is the most profitable because you want to get that one cooking first. And you run steel missions. You probably do between one and two before you're able to get two bars, right? You want two bars of supplies, no more, because then it turns into multiple sale vehicles. So if you can get two bars or less when you're stealing your supplies, that's where you want to go. So I go to my Coke business. I'll do roughly two steel missions. That gives me about two bars of supplies, maybe a little bit more, which now I have multiple vehicles, but I can you know take care of that. Then you go to the next business. You go to your meth. You do a couple supply or steel runs to get a couple of bars of supplies. You go to the next business. And by the time you get back around to your Coke business, you should be ready to sell. Okay. So you go to your Coke business, you run a couple of uh, steel missions to get two bars of supplies, go to your meth, then you go to your counterfeit cash, then you go to your weed, and then you go to your document forgery. All right. So you, you do basically a loop. And by the time you get back to the first business that you started at, you should be ready to sell. And that's a hundred percent profit. And that is a very viable and workable method to make money. But this is the downside. You are stuck doing only MC businesses. You can't focus on the bunker. You can't focus on your active income, which will make you more money per hour than the passive income regardless. Now, uh, you know, you can go and steal supplies at the bunker and then come back to your you know, Coke. And then, you know, so you could, you could do that. But now you're just prolonging everything. You're adding more time. You see what I'm saying? You have to add more steel emissions. So it is viable. You can do that. That is a that is a method. But is it the most efficient? No. Period. So, you know, I wanted to make this video. I know this is a long video, I get it, but there's a lot to talk about in this, you know, because I don't wanna I don't wanna offend anybody. I don't want to, you know, make anybody feel bad that they're doing something that, oh, Ty said it wasn't efficient. I'm, I'm a dumbass. No, 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 stop. Don't think like that. All right. Play the game however you want. I'm just giving you the facts. I'm telling you. Try a different method. Try it differently and see how you like it. If you don't, then that's fine. You know, uh, the buying supplies method, you have to be, you know, you can do this solo. Uh, it, it is viable. It works better with uh, friends, just like any method does, right? Um, but, you know, you have to understand that from, you know, time to money ratio, hour to hour, dollar per dollar, buying supplies is the more efficient way to go. These are not opinions that I'm giving you. These are facts. I'm, I, but I, I want to make sure I present the case for both, because there is positives in stealing supplies. There is. So you know, again, this is your game. You play it however you want. I am just giving you the cold hard facts. I want you guys to have all the information needed. Uh, you can say, Ty, you know what? I appreciate the information. I believe you. Uh, you know, it is more efficient. I just like stealing the. Uh, the I, I just like stealing supplies more because it's more fun for me, right? I enjoy the steel missions. And dude, I totally get that. I love the steel missions in this game. 
for the bunker, if you do 600 steel missions, you get like a, a rare steel event where you get the UFO, you get the rare tattoo. That is awesome. I totally get that. I love, I've done live broadcasts where all I did was steel missions. I didn't buy anything because I just missed those missions. So that right there, for the love of the game itself, you know, that I understand. And as money grinders, you have to remember, sometimes, man, it's not always about the money. It's not just about the time to money ratio. Sometimes it's just a quality of enjoying the game. And for that, I totally get, I, nobody understands that more than me. All right, because I really do. I love the game. I love the missions it gives you. I, I feel like just by buying supplies, you lose out on a lot of content. And that is absolutely true. There's so much, uh, you know, game content that you miss out on by buying supplies. That's the biggest negative I see. Once you get to a certain amount of money, you don't have to worry about being, you know, 100% of it. You get 200 million, 300 million, 400 million. You don't have to worry about all the efficiency, right? Just enjoy the game. But if you are starting out and you want to be as effective as you possibly can, you know, that's buying supplies is the best way to go. It's come to a point now where the best way to make money is just doing what you're seeing right here, just by running casino heists. And but you have to understand the problem with that is, is that now you're never going to be running any other business and you're missing out on even more game content. If you're in a crew, you're never going to be hanging out with your crew except for getting one, maybe two members to help you steal and complete, uh, you know, the the uh, the casino heist, you know, steal the artwork or the gold or whatever. And you'll barely be able to you know, hang out with the crew. So, you know, there is negatives of that. There is negatives to, to always stick it to the most efficient ways possible, the meta, right? So just keep that in mind. I want, to, I want you guys to understand, but I want to answer this for, you know, this, this question once and for all. When you say, Ty, what is better, stealing supplies or buying it? It is going, the answer is always going to be buying supplies. However, there are different variables and sometimes it is better to steal supplies. If you want to have fun, if you want to enjoy the game, there's certain, you know, variables to your, your portfolio, right? If you don't have your upgrades and things like that. But, you know, I don't want to put too much emphasis on that because having, not having your upgrades is a major problem. So, but yeah, I just want to have this little conversation with you guys uh, and talk about this because I've been getting a lot of, you know, um, people asking this question and, uh, and I, I totally respect people, how they want to play all that good stuff. But I just want to give you the facts. Okay. So I really hope you guys en enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking with me the whole time. I know I didn't intend this to be a long video. I wanted this to be like, you know, seven, eight minutes, but I just started rambling and talking, but there is a lot to go over. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it helped out, definitely leave a like, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel for the illest and realest content in the game. Make sure you smash. I mean, Smash that like button. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah.